So let's take just a second here and recap. Up to this point in the Bootstrapper's Guide to Wave Accounting, we've learned how to set up Wave Accounting for your particular business needs and learned about the different kinds of transactions that you can create inside of Wave Accounting. But data entry is not the end of accounting. All of this data that we're piling into the accounting software doesn't do any good unless we do something with it. So in the last few videos here, I'm going to, to segue out of the transaction portion and teach you what you can do with the data now that you've put it in to Wave Accounting. The whole purpose of transactions in Wave Accounting is to generate reports. These reports can give you powerful insights into your business and help you make better management decisions. The best two reports in Wave Accounting or any accounting software really for the small business owner to really understand is the dynamic duo of accounting reports, the profit and loss or income statement and the balance sheet. So we'll look very carefully at those and then we'll also introduce you to some of the other reports that are available in Wave Accounting for you to use. So let's start by looking at the profit and loss. To get to the income statement, we need to go to our reports page in the menu off here to the left. So this shows us all of our different reports that are available inside of WAVE. The two reports that we're going to be covering in detail are the financial statements reports, the balance sheet and the income statement. So let's look at that income statement. So we can click on the blue header to select the report and go into it. So this is the income statement. The income statement consists of three basic areas or groups of accounts. You have the revenue section here at the top, followed by the cost of goods sold, and then the operating expenses. So we talked a little bit about these three different groupings of accounts back in our video on setting up accounts back in the beginning of our course. Just as a quick refresher, the revenue is any income that you receive. So that is your gross income, income before any expenses. That's an important measuring tool as we begin to look at your business month over month and year over year. We want to see how your gross revenues are trending. Obviously, we want our revenues to go up over time, but they may fl fluctuate and you may find that you have a seasonal or cyclical business where certain months provide more revenue for you historically year over year than other months do. For example, Christmas trees have a high revenue in December a very low revenue in June or July. So certain businesses may see trends like that in your revenues and you want to make sure that you understand those trending cycles so that you can plan ahead for your business's slow periods and make sure that you're prepared for them. So tracking your gross revenue is important. So the next section that we have is our cost of goods sold. Costs of goods sold are basically any costs that are related to manufacturing or purchasing or selling our product or service. So in our example here, we just have a simple retail business that purchases and resells products. So our only cost of goods sold is our product purchases. But if you had a service, for example, that required you to travel out to clients, that travel could be considered part of your cost of providing the service. Um, if you manufacture your own product, the materials that go into manufacturing it, any of the equipment costs that go into manufacturing it, and even some of your labor, like your manufacturing staff labor, can go into your cost of, of creating the product. The reason that we split these out is to help us understand the difference between expenses of just operating our, our business day to day and the actual expense of providing the product. So after the cost of goods sold, we have a subtotal line called gross profit. And gross profit is simply revenue minus our cost of goods sold. So gross profit tells us what is the net amount of money that we get from selling a product. So if I sell a product for $2 that costs me $1.50 to purchase, then my gross profit is going to be 50 cents. It's my 
net earnings from having sold that product. And that's what gross pro profit is. So as we look at our gross profit line, we can trend our gross profit line compared to our revenue line. And typically speaking, we want to see them trend the same. Every industry is going to be a little bit different, but in your company, I would recommend setting a gross profit percentage that you track as your business grows. So for example, let's say that I have a $4 product that costs me $3 to purchase and I make a $1 profit, gross profit on it. So my gross profit percentage would be 25% or my gross profit divided by my total revenue. Typically speaking, in most businesses, your gross profit percentage should trend about the same as your business grows. The more m money you earn, the more costs go out, and so your gross profit should be about the same for the products that you sell. So you want to track that and, keep, and, and monitor that gross profit and make sure that it's trending together with your total revenue. If it's not, for example, if your gross profit is shrinking as your revenues are increasing, then we know that your costs to provide the products are going up and we need to reevaluate um, the cost of, of providing that product and service. After our gross profit line, we come to our operating expenses. Operating expenses are all expenses that relate to just the day-to-day -day operation of the business. As I usually tell my clients, these are the costs to keep the lights on and the doors open. So it really doesn't matter if I sell one widget or 2,000 widgets, these costs should be about the same month to month. Now, obviously, especially if you're a cyclical business, um, they, you know, certain months may be higher than other months, but year over year as we compare these, these costs shouldn't grow that much. And uh, we want to be able to track these very closely and make sure that they're not getting out of control. Where I see a lot of companies have problems with cash flow is when they let their operating expenses, not their cost of goods sold, get out of hand. So. Um, splitting those out gives us a really good way to measure how efficiently we're operating our business as opposed to the cost of just purchasing our products that we're going to sell. So that's the difference in a nutshell between cost of goods sold and operating expenses. Down at the bottom, we have our final line, net profit. Um, you've probably heard the term often, the bottom line. You know, what is the bottom line? Well, that comes from this income statement. The bottom line is net income, net profit. It is the summary of everything else we've talked about so far. And it is, it, in the end, what you have earned during this period in your business. Generally speaking, we want the net profit to grow over time. Um, if it's not growing, we can break down the rest of this report and look at each of the different elements. I have a lot of entrepreneurs that they open this report and all they do is scroll to the bottom and see the bottom line. If the bottom line's positive, then we're making money and that's good and that's the end of it. If it's negative, then we have a problem and that's the end of it. They don't really analyze each piece that makes up that net profit. So hopefully through this brief video um, discussing the income statement and the elements in it, will give you some insights into how to use this powerful tool to analyze your business and its trends over time. Now I've mentioned trends often. Within Wave Accounting, there is no way to see a month by month or year by year comparison of the income statement. And I think that really the comparison is more powerful than just looking at one period at a time. So what I would recommend doing is if you scroll back up here to the top, you can see that we have options to export this report into Excel, or if you don't have Excel, into a CSV file, and open it up in some sort of a spreadsheet software, like Excel or Google Sheets or something like that, and paste two or three of these together side by side, so that you can see how one month compares to the next or one year compares to the next. And that is what's going to give you the real power 
um, of the income statement in your business analysis.